Mother Africa, please forgive me. I have not been a grateful child. I considered what you have provided me and christened it insignificant, devoid of celebration. I am ashamed of my ignorance. I looked around and absorbed the lies, denunciations, and condemnations as if they were prized versions of vapor of that you could relieve symptoms of deeply embedded pathology reflected from reading, seeing, hearing, being daily reminded of my worthlessness. Then I reflected it back like a mirror for all to see. I showed others my self-loathing. My venom was particularly aimed at those who looked like me, black and unworthy. I showed them my deepest scars, etched into my being like a sculptor's hand, revealing the veins of my insignificance, keeping me small and bitter, longing for anything but melanin skin, broad nose, full lips, textured hair, generous hips. I was inundated with messaging around every corner, under every stone, that my Black was dreadful, appalling, vile, and unwanted. Well, at least that's what Massa said, despite wandering from his spouse's bed to find relief between the thighs of enslaved meat, justifying to his lily-white bride that she was much too pure to receive his sexual perversions. That's what white women said as they mimicked our biological properties that so fascinated their men's loins, wearing hoops under their petticoats to add roundness to their rumps, which eventually evolved into butt implants to permanently shape their silhouettes and cayenne pepper and olive oil, electronic stimulations, and even acid injections to pump their thin lips. That's what the cross burning, picnic lynching, dead of night terrorizing, gun-toting, worldwide colonizing, economic exploiting, segregation insisting, next suffocating, self-righteous believing, liberal, one black friend having, crack cocaine planting, everyday kind of racist said, when the potency of a black man swagger rooted in within his midnight skin, the rhythm of our drum beats that stirred joy in weary bones or the genius of our creativity that weaved patterns, rituals, and rice into our stolen braids, stirred envy, disguised as fear, camouflaged as hatred, and masquerading as domestic terrorism in the lives of African Americans and other colored people who just want to live authentically free. I believe those lies of my unworthiness, even blame those similarly oppressed and generationally infected with grotesquely perverted wounds of psychological shame, taught so well for hundreds of years that it was embedded in my own consciousness to shame my people, to betray my people, to belittle my people, to shun my people, even kill my people with black on black gun violence, being fed more hate than love and also receiving never enough educational love, community love, family love, self-love, I preferred that I be the one to cause death over yet another form of disrespect. So by any means necessary, I was intent to rid myself of the haunting of internalized evaluation, the cognitive dissonance of living in a costume that is so effortlessly hated, despised, resented by everyone, including me. I had disregarded my inheritance, Mother Africa, looking toward the blinding reflection of a false God. I overlooked the cultural resilience you imbued within my bloodline. I was too distracted by materialism and a longing to feel the emptiness I pretended wasn't even there. I was too hungry for outside affirmation and white attention to remember that you had embedded inside of me a deep love for melanin, a forgiving heart in the midst of suffering, a spiritual obligation to each of your offspring that you knew altogether your children would be stronger, our money would go further, 
our natural resources more valued, our presence more deeply loved. I had been neglectful, so neglectful, but not ignorant. I noticed your reminders hidden within even your most distant relatives, that certain je ne sais quoi that cannot be ignored, even when distant siblings hoped all traces of you would disappear like footprints under an inbound ocean's wave. Still, I see you, Mother Africa. I see you with new eyes. I see you with an in inner mirror of self-reflection necklace with grace, cleansed of inner rage and cultureless conformity. It took a while to discover a paradigm, but now I have found what has brought me peace. I am no longer broken, complicit in immortalizing my own trauma, enticed by the distraction of victimhood and the hope that one day white people will concede to forth hundred years of their oppressive tactics and finally confirm my own self-worth. I gave away too much of my inner power to make other people feel more comfortable. I was too long distracted drinking the white tears of the Beckys and the Karens while my own black children are bleeding out at my feet. Yeah, I said it for the sake of healing my own mental health? I ask for your forgiveness, Mother Africa. For I have now done my work to reclaim you in my heart. I have lovingly, gratefully, tenderly released my slaves. An acronym for my soul, longing for approval, attention, acceptance, admittance, allegiance, appreciation, acknowledgement, assimilation, adoration, and affirmation, etc., 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 versus empowerment. I have lovingly released my slaves in order to heal my broken heart. I have emancipated myself from the mental shackles that have chained me to a dehumanizing narrative out of my control. And I am now liberated and committed and deeply loving my black woman self and living without dehabilitating self-hatred that is so encouraged by others. And I am redirecting those accumulated emotions toward the abolitionist cause of freeing slaves who don't yet realize that they 